Hello, and welcome to EDH Rex Upping the Average, where we take a commander's average deck list as compiled by the data on EDH Rec and make some swaps to it to help take it from being a good start to a great one. This week, the commander we're discussing is one that I actually built on a whim, but it quickly became one of my favorite decks ever. You see, there are some who call me Grim. Sir Conrad the Grim is a 5-mana five 5-4 five human knight with more lines of rules text than most mythic rares. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card hits the graveyard from anywhere, or whenever a creature card leaves our graveyard, he deals damage to each opponent. Not life loss, damage. Not only that, but he can pay 2 mana to mill every player for one card. The fact that this guy's an uncommon absolutely blows my freaking mind. Because Conrad can trigger when creature cards are milled from the deck to the graveyard, his EDH rec page is filled with lots of cards that emphasize mill. There are some big wallopers in there too, like the card Morality Shift, which do this en masse, or spells that rip a bunch of creatures back out of the graveyard, resulting in masses of Conrad damage pings to wipe out the whole table. Conrad is my favorite deck, which means I have a lot to say about him, but let's start off by actually getting his average deck list from EDH Rec and importing it into the Architect deck building website. Remember that, as always, the swaps we make to the average list must either keep the total price cost neutral or help lower the price of the overall list. Conrad's a crazy commander, crammed with crucial creatures, crackling conjurations, and kooky curios. There's actually a very high number of creatures here, a number we don't usually see except in tribal decks. The instinct of the Conrad player here is good. More creatures and fewer spells means that his ability has a higher hit rate whenever things get milled. This guy can also do some seriously crazy things, like if we overload on cards from a Necropotence for example, we can discard a ton of creatures which procs Conrad to deal damage, and then those creature cards will be exiled by the Necropotence trigger, procking Conrad again. Note too that he deals damage, not life loss, so that Phyresis in the main board? Yeah. That can infect the table out. Watch your back, this guy's got tricks. However, as a necromancer myself, and a dedicated Conrad player since he was first released in 2019, I have to say that I see a, a lot of changes that I'd like to make here. The categories of upgrades fall into the following three sections. Mill, Mana, and the Macabre. Let's start with Mill. The first point I'm going to tackle with Conrad is absolutely one of his most important, and it's actually going to be the guiding principle for the overwhelming majority of our cuts. The math doesn't favor Mill. Let's look again at all those creature cards in the deck. So many of them. So many of them mill cards when they enter, or when they die, or when they attack, so as to trigger Conrad's ability. So already we're starting to see our first problem. These creatures are puny, and their effects do very, very little when they're on their own. And Conrad is not always going to be on the battlefield to witness the milling. So strike one, these creatures are way too commander dependent, and Conrad won't always be in play. Believe me, people love to get rid of him, he is a removal magnet. And puny creatures filling up graveyards when Conrad's not there to see it doesn't really do a whole lot. If anything, that might actually just end up fueling an enemy Muldrotha player by filling up their graveyard. So commander dependency, that's strike one. In addition, the probability of milling to deal damage is actually not very good. In episodes of the EDH Rec podcast, we've discussed that the average number of creatures in commander decks typically land somewhere around 25, so about a fourth of a deck. There are Spellslinger archetypes that run way fewer and tribal decks that run way more, but on average, about a quarter of any given deck is bound to be creature cards. And of course, this current list has 30. So whenever we mill someone for a card, it's only about give or take a 20 25% hit rate. Not fabulous odds. In fact, let's do some example math with a sample card. Stitcher Supplier mills us for 3 when it enters or dies. There are 99 cards in the deck, but of course there won't be 99 cards in the deck when we play this card, so let's estimate that we play them on, I don't know, turn 6, with roughly 85 cards left in the deck. So Stitcher Supplier mills 3 cards, making our sample size 3. Excluding the Supplier, there are 29 other creatures in the deck, and assuming that all those creature cards are still in the deck, which won't always be true, but let's go with it to give it the best odds. The odds of milling a creature card with the supplier are 71%. The chances that it hits two creatures when it mills? That's only 23%. And there's a 29% chance that it doesn't get any creatures at all. 
So Stitcher Supplier's ability represents, most often, just one damage. But more than a fourth of the time, it won't do any damage. And all of this is, again, assuming we play a Stitcher Supplier when Conrad is in play to see the mill and deal any damage. There are slight variations on which creatures mill at what time and how many players they hit, but at most, they're just mathematically unlikely to do all that much damage, even when the conditions are ideal. So that's strike two. Believe me, I love filling up a graveyard, but that damage output is just as puny as the creatures that it's attached to. Even Conrad's own activated ability doesn't have great odds of proccing damage triggers. It will whiff a lot, so having a bunch of other tiny creatures that can also whiff or just not do a whole bunch of damage either, that's a second strike. Now, filling up the graveyard isn't a one-time thing. Putting creature cards in the yard means that they can be manipulated later, especially by being taken out of the graveyard. So this is surely a point in Mill's favor, right? Milling gives us more to work with. And to that, I say, yes, it's true. Mill will absolutely play a role here. But Conrad doesn't need help with that, because he can do it himself. That's strike three. These effects are redundant. They only deal damage when Conrad's in play, but Conrad can already do the mill himself. He doesn't need extra help with that tiny mill. He needs support in a completely different way. And we'll get to that soon, but for now, we've hit our three strikes. Commander-dependent creatures that have tiny damage output and offer ineffective redundancy? You're out of here. Eye Collector, Supplier, Ghoul Caller's Bell, I'm chopping a ton of cards in this section. The synergy that they appear to have with Conrad is honestly kind of just misdirection. I like Dredge a lot, but the Thug isn't nearly as useful as he looks. I'll hold on to the Imp though. He's a useful blocker, and there's at least one trick that I want to use Dredge for that I'll get to a little bit later. Altar of the Brood is a mill effect that's a lot closer to what we're after because of its potential for repetition, but it too has just kind of failed to impress me. Geth is next, and this is a sad one to cut, one that I actually considered keeping, but he is a lot of mana and requires a lot of mana, and I want to put all that mana somewhere else. More on that later too. Finally, Dread Summons. I kept this one in my build for way longer than I should have, because I wanted it to work so badly. And it's not that it doesn't work, it's just a very dead card in the early game. And in the late game, it takes a lot of mana to do something that we, again, kinda already have access to from Conrad's own mill ability. The zombies are nice, I guess, but even then, this spell totally whiffs sometimes. Like, paying 10 mana to make one tapped zombie. That happens. It's just not a consistent enough mana sync card. Don't make the mistake that I did and keep a card in the deck because of what it could do. Note that I'm not removing all the mill effects. If they have additional utility for us, such as Altar of Dementia, which is a sacrifice outlet to help us intentionally kill our own creatures when we need them to die, then yeah, I'm totally here for it. Perpetual Timepiece is another. It can mill quietly every turn, but it also has a fantastic second option of reshuffling our graveyard, which can either save it from rogue grave hate effects or become an outlet to trigger Conrad en masse. And there's also, of course, Mesmeric Orb, which mills at such a a huge rate for so little mana that it is totally worth keeping. And Mind Crank? Mind Crank is Conrad's bread and butter. Damage equals mill, and mill means more damage. This card with Conrad can win a game almost by itself. So I'm not cutting all the mill, just the bad ones. Because here's the thing, the math doesn't favor all that little mill, but it does favor something else. Something I'm excited to get to in section two. I may have spoken too soon earlier. Perhaps a better way to phrase the guiding principle isn't the math doesn't favor mill, but rather mana over mill. And that's simply because with more mana, we can make more mill. Remember, Conrad can mill things with his own ability. He's got that covered. It's not the best rate in the world, but with enough mana, it can do some work. So let's give him more mana to work with. Surprisingly, Arcane Signet didn't show up in Conrad's average deck list, so I'm throwing that right in there. To keep things cheap, I'll also put in Charcoal Diamond and Star Compass. I really recommend going ham on Mana Rocks, though. Thran Dynamo is on the pricier side, I think, but Everflowing Chalice has really good scalability, so let's get that in there. 
And note, Conrad's ability is not the only reason to add in more mana rocks. The real reason to do it is just to make sure that we can actually play the game. Mana Acceleration will grease the wheels of the whole deck by making sure we have the resources to cast spells and activate abilities, or to even just recast Conrad after he's been removed over and over and over. I don't want us to spend valuable card slots on teeny tiny creatures that might deal damage when Conrad is in play because, as it turns out, Mana Rocks secretly supplant that same functionality. Mana rocks smooth out the deck, and just like those mini mill creatures, they can also be used to help us fill graveyards by giving us more activations of Conrad's ability. That's what Conrad needs help with. Not mill, but fuel. A good mana rock goes a long way. In fact, I want to add one more, a favorite for mono black decks and a happily more affordable card nowadays. Manascape Refractor is unassuming, but it can copy a lot of neat effects, most notably our Cabal Stronghold for some very nice mana output. On that note, I actually ought to address the lands. Cabal Stronghold is a fantastic super ramp option, and note that Cabal Coffers doesn't show up in the average deck, probably owing to the fact that Wizards hasn't reprinted it for over 12 years, but it's totally cool, Wizards of the Coast. Don't worry about it. We don't mind. Anyway, Cabal Stronghold places a demand on our lands to really conform to being basic swamps. It probably doesn't look like it, but those few non-basics really truly may get in the way more than they help out. I won't be too harsh on too many of the non-basics. Bajukabog, for example, is a great hoser, and honest to goodness, I've even used it on myself to trigger Conrad for lethal damage when all the creatures left my graveyard. It's astounding. I also like the Agadim, and the Mortuary Mire and Witch's Cottage effects are super cool to proc Conrad's ability and set him up for a definite creature card to mill off the top of the deck, too. However, I don't care as much for the Memorial and the Dakmore, though. Dakmore's dredge is cool, but small, and the Memorial is way too slow. There's some pre-existing mana stuff in the deck that I have to chop out too, actually. Songs of the Damned and Dark Ritual are one-off spells, and honestly, we'll prefer consistency over burst. If you want burst mana, play a card like Bubbling Monk instead. I don't think that card's in budget for us here, but it's a way better card for one-off mana burst effects than these cards will be for us. Heck, one of these cards doesn't even do anything until their graveyard is already full. Goodbye. I also want to address the Leaden Mirror and the Milliken. The idea here is a solid one. These are mana cards and creature cards, which can help trigger Conrad. But sadly, this is another thing that I had to let go of in my own Conrad list too. Mana dorks are, as it turns out, a liability. Losing your mana resources to random board wipes sets you back way too much, and Conrad needs his mana to stay strong as the game goes long. The damage that these cards could represent isn't as important as the mana loss that they will cost us. Sorry, fellas. Oh, and Priest of the Forgotten Gods is here too? Hmm. No, thank you. I don't like this card one bit. Sorry. It looks good, but it's a mana dork that doesn't help us develop our board, a sacrifice outlet that has summoning sickness, and a removal effect that we've already got covered elsewhere. Get out. All right, things looking good? Good, because this is the fun part. I've been cutting cards and cleaning house, it's true, but you can't add unless you subtract. So now's the time when we get to fill the list back up. We've gone over the mill and the mana, but now it's time for the macabre. Do you know why Conrad is so grim? It's because whenever he does anything cool, all his friends' life totals go straight to zero. Let the bodies hit the floor. Conrad loves to watch things hit the graveyard. Often we can pull this off with library-related effects. Morality Shift, for example, flops a ton of creature cards into the yard for supreme damage. Forever Young effects can rip creatures out of the yard all at once and set them back on top of the library to be milled again by Conrad. Or, a personal favorite trick that I alluded to earlier, they can be dredged immediately again with Stinkweed Imp on the draw trigger of the spell. Seriously, your opponents will be very impressed by this, but they will also sigh in disappointment as it completely chunks their life total to bits. Note also that there is a Blood Chief Ascension in the average list, but if you don't want to spend that much money on a card, I can't say I blame you. It's cool synergy, but it'll also put a huge target on your back, so don't feel obligated to play this one. I just bring it up to point out how much this average list is dedicated to the idea of dealing damage through mill. 
However, Conrad isn't just about Mill. He also just loves to watch things die on the battlefield, too. In fact, that's one of the best times to deploy him, when the battlefield is full of creatures. A single Wrath might accidentally deal way more damage than anyone was expecting. It's terrific. So to that end, let's make sure that we have our own removal to make sure we can make that happen. I love Deadly Tempest as a budget Wrath card, but this card can also double up the damage from Conrad in the best way. Or, more commonly, when we play a Wrath, it's when we don't have any creatures in play, but others do, so only they take the heat for overextending. Ostone is my next add, and I love it for its ability to help us out by getting rid of enchantments, a card type that Mono Black can really struggle against. I've rarely been unhappy to see this card in my hand. Even if it is a smidge expensive to use, it's worth it. Finally, I didn't like mana on creatures, but I do like removal on creatures. I'm not a big fan of Shriek Maw because it's limited in scope and its speed, but I am a fan of Murderous Rider here. It can be a creature card for Conrad to track, but also it can be a kill spell whenever we need it to be. It even triggers Conrad twice when it dies as a creature because it will immediately leave our graveyard. As it happens, though, Conrad isn't the only one who likes to watch things die. So too do some of Mono Black's most enjoyable card draw options. Things like Grim Horror Specs, Midnight Reaper, and even Corpse Augur. Do you know how many card advantage effects the deck had when we started? Just five. Five! That's so low! We gotta increase it to make sure we don't run out of steam, which is really easy to do when we're killing off our own creatures for profit. These three creature versions of card advantage are neat, but I'm not satisfied with it just yet. Let's get two more effects in here. Skull Clamp is a house, and I also just truly like the card Funeral Rites. It's very budget friendly, and the mill is incidental, but could be useful. I'll pause real quick for some cards to remove, though. They're delightful about death, but I just don't think they do as much as other cards would do in those spots instead. I appreciate the Tormod in the list, but I don't really like the Desecrated Tomb. It's not a creature itself, and the times it can actually crank out multiple bat tokens are the times when we're already doing well. I'm afraid that most of the time, its output is pretty lackluster. Bastion of Remembrance is tough to cut, but it too has just not wowed me with its damage output. A deck more specifically dedicated to aristocrats can make better use of it, but Conrad's mission is divided ever so slightly on that front, which makes us not as crazy on it here. And speaking of graveyards, Mausoleum Secrets is a bad tutor. It's just bad. I, it can't find the artifacts we might want, and it can't do anything without our deck already functioning really well in the first place, so it's just too situational, and I'm not about that. All right, back to adding in fun things. Earlier, you may have noticed a pattern with some of the creatures I added into the deck, and that's just that they are perfectly fine creatures on their own. I think that's how Conrad functions best. We don't want those mini mill creatures that depend upon Conrad to be useful. We want good, solid creatures that Conrad can then make even more deadly. These are three that I really like. Woe Strider is a sack outlet that also can trigger Conrad by escaping from the graveyard. Abhorrent Overlord is next, and it is hilariously good in this deck. Conrad can turn all those extra bodies into more damage, but he's actually not the only one, because this deck also plays a Yara. These two cards, in conjunction with one another, has won me more games than I can count. Oh, and I also really enjoy the Encore mechanic from Commander Legends, so I'm going to recommend Exquisite Huntmaster, actually. Encore means that it will leave the graveyard, so okay, Conrad trigger there. Then we get three tokens which must attack that might deal damage to the opponents or they might block and something could die, which would also be a Conrad trigger. Then at the end of the turn, the tokens will be sacrificed, so again, Conrad triggers. And after that, they'll leave behind even more tokens that we can kill off for, you guessed it, even more Conrad triggers. Putting bodies onto the battlefield is a way more reliable way to make sure that Conrad will deal damage whenever those things die, but having those bodies is also just a great way to help us make sure we can attack or block, even when Conrad's not in play, to make sure we've got whatever we need. This leaves us with fewer creatures than the overall list began with, but man, this is very satisfying indeed. Increasing the number of creatures in a Conrad list is a good instinct. You don't want to drop it too low that he's got nothing to work with. However, this new lineup is good because it keeps us up on card advantage, and these are cards that don't depend upon bad odds to deal damage to our enemies, so I'm feeling great about it. And I mean what I say there. Bad odds. Playing the odds with the mill game is inconsistent. 
I mean, the more mana we have, the more Conrad himself can mill, and we can sometimes dump a bunch of mana into that and hope to get accuracy by volume there, but even then, that's not what Conrad's really about. Remember, we're in mono black. We don't play the odds, we manipulate the odds. One of my favorite cards in the deck is this enchantment right here, Tortured Existence. Whenever we pay one mana, we'll toss a creature away and bring another creature back out of the yard to our hand. And then we can repeat it, and then repeat, and then repeat, and repeat, and repeat. That's two Conrad triggers every time for just one mana. It's a thing of beauty. That is what we're aiming for. Effects that function so gross that it's practically cheating. Though not as potent as the Tortured Existence, I really enjoy the card Haunted Crossroads. It's one mana to pull something out of the yard and put a creature card right atop the deck. Conrad can repeatedly mill the same creatures or pull a ton back out in dramatic flourishes or even use it honestly and actually get back a creature that we want to play again. It's brilliant stuff. My penultimate ad is a very tricky card indeed, and that's Mimic Vat. Whenever a creature dies, Mimic Vat can exile it. Well, at first there's a Conrad trigger, and then Mimic Vat can exile it. If it's our creature that Mimic Vat is exiling, it's pulling that creature out of the graveyard, so that's another Conrad trigger. But this card also triggers multiple times when creatures die all at once, say with a Plague Crafter effect. Let's say we cast a Plague Crafter, so it and three other creatures die. Okay, four Conrad triggers. And if they're all creature cards, that's four Mimic Vat triggers too. On the first Mimic Vat trigger, it can exile one of those dead enemy creatures. Cool. Then the next Mimic Vat trigger will resolve, and it will exile another dead enemy creature, and it will put the first one back to its owner's graveyard. Conrad sees that and triggers again. Then the third Mimic Vat trigger will happen for the third enemy creature and put the second creature back to its owner's graveyard. Again, Conrad trigger. Then we can Mimic Vat our own creature. It leaves our graveyard, so Conrad trigger right there, and the enemy card goes back to their graveyard, so again, another Conrad trigger. And now we've got a Plague Crafter under a Mimic Vat. There's some absolutely nasty tricks that you can pull off with this thing. You have to time it carefully, and this exact synergy can be kind of board dependent, especially just to have Conrad in play in the first place, but even if our commander's not around, there are worse things than repeatedly making copies of stuff like Plague Crafter every turn. And what's my last card? Possibly my favorite surprise trick ever. Wake the Dead. It can bring back a bunch of creatures for a relatively small mana investment for a one-time Encore performance. This card can only be cast in combat, but that's not as bad a restriction as it seems. No one can skip their combat on purpose. They always have to pass through it, even if they won't or can't attack. So we can cast this card on enemy turns for great surprises. And man, it is so great when we do. Conrad sees the creatures leave the yard and sees when they are forced to die too. And I tell you what, you haven't lived until you've revived a Grey Merchant, a Yara, and Abhorrent Overlord all at once during an enemy attack step and killed them on their own turn. Wizards of the Coast should not have let necromancers like us have this kind of power. All right, there we are, our final list. A link to this list can be found in the description below with the cuts in the maybe board. And I've also included a link to my own personal Conrad list down there too, in case you, just like me, can't get enough of this commander's insane abilities. I hope you've enjoyed Sir Conrad's grim tale, and if you have any suggestions that will make him even grimmer, make sure you share them with your fellow players in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.